Hey. So the last couple of days I've uh, read some articles and and uh, seen some news reports and a number of news reports detailing uh, child uh, pedophile rings in um, higher up elites with elites and movie stars and ambassadors and um, from a number of different countries and a number of different places uh, many of them from the U.S., France, uh, I think Greece, um, anyway, a number of countries, and and uh, some of them using the children, uh, sexual abuse, and, uh, and murdering the children, and indeed uh, accounts, not, not conspiracies or anything, these were these were uh, actual cases where people were prosecuted, and, and a lot of them mysteriously weren't prosecuted. And and uh, and there's also uh, a lot of cases in in the UK right now uh, where a lot of these refugees and, and Muslims are uh, raping uh, young girls, and uh, a lot of these documented cases where they have allowed, let them go free or, or let them serve a, a very light sentence of a few months or f a few weeks in some cases um, because it was uh, quote-unquote uh, consensual, um, but it wasn't. And uh, one of these cases, the father tried to kill one of these guys um, for raping his daughter, and the police shot him dead. And um, and so there's there's a protection of evil people. Evil people are being protected. And uh, at work on Audible, I've been listening to the Gulag Archipelago. Um, about ten hours from being finished, and it's I can't remember. It's, it's between seventy-five hours and ninety hours, I think, somewhere right around there of the account of the Russian or the Soviet uh, concentration camps and um, labor camps and the politics and everything going on there. And uh, they had a class that was known as the thieves. And the thieves could rob you and they would just get a slap on the hand. They could kill you and get a slap on the hand. However, the Soviet Union had passed laws uh, concerning self-defense, and, and if you, you you couldn't pull your knife unless somebody had pulled a knife on you, you know, even if they're fixing a gang up on you and you recognize the situation, if you pull yours first, you're, uh, you might get slapped with a, a five-year, ten-year labor camp uh, term. And uh, you couldn't stab them until they stabbed you. Uh, even if they had your, their knife out and you had yours, you, you couldn't stab them first. Um, even if it's clear they're going to attack you and trying to kill you. So the law favored the thieves. And it, it assisted the thieves in keeping this reign of terror over the citizenry. And... Um, and so there's favoritism of thieves, rapists, murderers, and it harkens back, at least it reminds some of us of when Jesus was on trial and the custom was to let one person go free and they said, give us Barabbas. And Barabbas was a thief and a murderer and Jesus had went around healing people and giving proverbs and teaching and all this. Um, and yet they said, give us Barabbas. So what we're seeing today is the spirit of the Antichrist. And it's been here since the time of Christ. He said even now there are Antichrist or 
the spirit of the Antichrist is here. And, you know, I think it's important to defend the innocent. I think it's important to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. And I think we need to vote and we need to be uh, voicing our opinions and beliefs and our concerns about where the nation is going politically and morally. I think all of that is important and necessary. But seeing as how this is the spirit of the Antichrist, that this is a spiritual thing more than it's a political thing. Uh, we need to also, those of you that are believers, need to be in prayer. When you hear um, some new thing happen um, that gets your blood boiling, you're angry about what's going on, and maybe some of you don't get angry, maybe you just kind of close your mind to it and pretend it's not happening, and that doesn't help either because one day it will affect you, it will come to your doorstep, it will get inside your house, and the laws that they will institute will affect you whether you like it or not somewhere down the road so there's really no hiding from it you have to face it so those of you that believe uh, instead of just and, and I mean I get angry with a lot of things that happen because they're unjust um, crooked unlawful a number of things there's double standards and um, so kind of the the norm is to hear about it, to stew about it, and then to take to Facebook or YouTube or um, talk to my wife or a friend or something about it, and then it passes. You know, that's well, that's one one more thing under the the belt to. Um, uphold my world view and, and the reasons I believe what I believe and the reasons I don't believe what I don't believe. But when something happens, I think we need to pray uh, specifically about those things. When, when it's something serious like these child pedophile rings, um, if we're believers, then we believe that our prayers actually do something, that it's not just sent up to heaven silent and there's there's no answer, there's no... Uh, recourse or anything so I, I think we need to pray I think not only do we need to voice our opinions not only do we need to call congressmen and and vote and make people aware of what's going on we need to pray and we need to be good people we need to stand up for what's right we need to be good when nobody's looking we need to um, we need to be good when when it's only us, because if we really believe in God, then you know don't don't be embarrassed when you're doing something wrong in front of somebody else. Um, it's it's time to to realize that uh, your life behind the scenes, wherever you are, needs to be pleasing to the Lord. And and if we'll fix ourselves, and we'll be right morally, spiritually. Uh, that'll do, go a lot further in helping change this world than uh, trying to vote or yell or fight online or whatever it may be. Uh, so let's focus on ourselves and and pray about a lot of situations. Uh, that'll that'll do a lot more than uh, even voting, I think. Uh, although I think we need to do both.